In 1939, at the urging of other Jewish refugee scientists, Albert Einstein informed President Roosevelt that either the Allies or the Axis powers could build an atomic bomb. Subsequently, Roosevelt was encouraged by the work of American and British atomic scientists and warned by rumors that Germany was working on the bomb. He ordered the organization of the Manhattan Engineer District in June 1942 to develop an atomic weapon. The name Manhattan District came about because this special district of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers had its headquarters on Fifth Avenue in New York City, downtown Manhattan. Scientists, as well as military men, served on the district's advisory committees. In September, Secretary of War Stimson placed Brigadier General Leslie Groves in charge of the Manhattan Project. The Manhattan District drew up contracts with universities and industries to study atomic sciences and production processes for the bomb. It was presumed that a bomb could be made from an isotope of uranium, uranium-235, or from plutonium. But the isotope 235 is only 1% of ordinary uranium. Four possible ways of separating uranium-235 from ordinary uranium were under consideration. Thermal diffusion, gaseous diffusion, electromagnetic extraction, or separation in a centrifuge. Plutonium could be made as a byproduct of fissioning uranium in a reactor, in which neutrons are slowed by graphite or by deuterium, often referred to as heavy water. The first problem was to refine uranium to the purity necessary for experiments. By fall 1942, there was a sufficient quantity of uranium produced pure enough to use in the first controlled nuclear chain reaction. This milestone occurred December 2nd, 1942, in a uranium graphite reactor, or pile, operated by Enrico Fermi under Stagfield Stadium at Chicago University. Calculations showed that plutonium production from the Fermi pile would take 70,000 years to make enough for one bomb. Efficient plutonium extraction was a long way off. Larger reactors were built at the Clinton Engineering Works near Oak Ridge, Tennessee and at Hanford Engineering Works at Hanford, Washington. Scientists gathered at Los Alamos, New Mexico to undertake weapon physics studies, calculations, and designs while they waited for plutonium and uranium to be delivered. Los Alamos, known only as Site Y, and the other sites were built in remote areas for reasons of safety and security. Housing and the services of military posts had to be provided. 30 miles from Knoxville on the Clinch River, contractors Stone and Webster built a city, eventually the fifth largest in Tennessee. Houses were finished, including wiring, plumbing, stove, and refrigerator, at the rate of one every half hour. The electromagnetic plant, known as Y-12, or the racetrack, was built in Bear Creek Valley near Clinton, Tennessee. By 1945, it had made enough uranium-235 to supply the first bomb dropped on Japan. The thermal diffusion plant, known as S-50, or the Fox Farm, used plans from the U.S. Navy. S-50 was built swiftly in 1944 and provided uranium enriched in the 235 isotope for even further enrichment at Y-12. The gaseous diffusion plant, K-25, required miles of piping and thousands of pumps to create one million cubic feet of space enclosed in a hard vacuum. By the summer of 1945, it was delivering high-purity uranium-235 to Los Alamos and providing some to Y-12 as well. Clinton's X-10 installation was a large reactor for producing plutonium, plus a separation plant of several buildings and its own power plant. Chemical separation of the radioactive materials was accomplished by remote control behind heavy shielding. Hanford, too, had its homes for 15,000 people far from the plants. Using a precipitation process, Hanford had separated out enough plutonium by February 1945 
to send to Los Alamos in warm, slightly radioactive, gold-plated ingots. Workers at the production plants knew only enough about the operation to do their jobs. The Counterintelligence Corps, or CIC, furnished spies to guard production plants against sabotage and to listen in the towns for loose talk. If someone asked a worker, What are you guys making up there? He'd better answer something like, Oh, about a dollar and a quarter an hour. How about you, buddy? The CIC also transported the precious bits of uranium-235 and plutonium back and forth across the country. Project Y did not have the tremendous power and water requirements of the production plants. It could be set on a remote plateau against the Jemez Mountains in north-central New Mexico. The world's first nuclear explosion was proof of Project Y's success. On July 16, 1945, a plutonium bomb was detonated at Trinity Site, 200 miles south of Los Alamos, melting the desert sands and sending a brilliant flash of light into the dawn sky. The Manhattan District's primary mission was accomplished. The remaining mission was to prepare to bomb an enemy target. In summer 1944, the 509th Composite Group, 20th Air Force, began training at Wendover Field, Utah. In February 1945, they based themselves on Tinian Island in the Marianas, awaiting the signal to bomb Japan. In March, Project A, or Alberta, was formally organized to establish scientific facilities on Tinian and to coordinate the work of bomb developers and the delivery group. Now you are at the world's largest airfield on Tinian in the Marianas. The voice you hear is that of Chaplain William Downey, who stood amongst the target charts, the escape kits, and the stale coffee, and said a prayer for the Enola gay and civilization. We pray thee that the end of the war may come soon, and that once more we may know peace on earth. May the men who fly this night be kept safe in thy care. On August 6th, the 509th dropped a uranium bomb, never before tested, on Hiroshima. Three days later, they dropped the plutonium bomb on Nagasaki. A fascinating aspect of the Manhattan Project was codenamed Alsos, Greek for groves, after General Groves. Scientists, military intelligence personnel, and interpreters followed Allied troops into Italy, France, Germany, and Japan. They interviewed scientists and scoured laboratories to find out how much work the enemy had done on an atomic bomb. Their conclusion? Very little. 